Hello and welcome to the Our Dad Stamps podcast. My name is Pete West and I've spent half a lifetime collecting stamps and more than 10 years buying and selling them. In these podcasts I want to share some personal stories, tips and tricks that I've learned along the way and maybe encourage a few non-philatelists to take up this fascinating and absorbing hobby. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Welcome to another edition of our Dad Stamps podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the Penny Black, the world's very first postage stamp printed by Perkins, Bacon and Petch for issue in 1840. Inevitably, when I tell people that I collect stamps, the first question they always say to me is, have you got a Penny Black? And when I reply to them that I've actually got 11 Penny Blacks, they look at me incredulously and either think I'm incredibly stupid or incredibly rich. So which do you think it is, Sheila? Well, I have to say, if they are very rare and it's expensive as people think, I obviously haven't found the missing millions. So I'm saying there's obviously some story behind this. Well, yes, you are correct. They're, they're actually they're not exceptionally valuable. There are certainly British stamps that are more valuable than Penny Black, uh, let alone other stamps in the world. And there were actually 68.5 million Penny Blacks issued in just over a year. So it, it's quite an incredible amount of Penny Blacks. And it's estimated there's probably about 13 million of them still in, still in existence. So as you can see, it's not a particularly rare stamp. So where has this story come that everybody's fixated on the Penny Black? Because it's the first stamp that was ever produced. So it's... And, and because it's the first stamp, it is still a stamp that everybody wants to own, which actually does make the value slightly higher than it would be if it was any other stamp, bearing in mind how many of them are, are still in existence. There is a couple of stories, actually, to go with the volume of Penny Blacks that were printed. A couple of interesting articles, and I, I haven't been able to verify whether either of these are true or not, but there is a story of an advert being placed in the paper in, in the 1800s. And actually, it's not a story. This, the advert did actually appear in the paper. And it's of a supposedly a young lady wanting to cover her dressing room with cancelled postage stamps. And, and she's quoted as saying that she doesn't have enough and would be gratefully obliged if any good-natured person who may have these otherwise useless little stickers at their disposal would assist her in her whimsical project. There's a couple of things wrong with this. As I said, the, the article actually appeared, but there is no evidence of her decorating her house. And it is believed that this was actually placed by a, a fraudster who devised a way of cleaning off the postmarks from a penny black and therefore just wanted a regular supply of penny blacks so that he could clean them off and reuse them or resell them as, as new stamps. Whether that story is true or not, it's still quite a nice little story. The second story I have about Penny Blacks is equally about somebody wallpapering their room with stamps. And it comes from an article in, in a magazine in the 1920s in which it says in Bury St Edmunds in, in East Anglia, a company called Whitfield King & Co bought a house solely because that one of the rooms in the house was wallpapered entirely of British postage stamps. And they bought it with the idea of cleaning the, the stamps off and selling them. And it is said that they were able to get 2,000 penny blacks and between one and one and a half thousand Tutney Blues which would have been worth a fortune. Now, again, I cannot find whether this is true or not. You'd think in the 1920s, if this had happened, there would be a picture. The company Whitfield King & Co did actually exist, and it was a well-known stamp dealer. So, yeah, whether there is a house with 2,000 penny blacks on it, it would be quite nice to have one. So, ideally, if anybody is listening to this podcast who is a relative of anybody in either of these two stories... Please get in touch, as we would love to have the story verified and uh, see what uh, happened. Yeah, they're, they're fun stories, and they have been going around for quite a while. Um, and as I said, as to the truth of any of them, I really I haven't been able to verify. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. So the next question is, why have I got 11 penny backs? 
And the reason is I've got one that's actually on an envelope, still, still attached to the envelope with the address on it, which makes it slightly special. And the other 10 are all from different plate numbers. And that makes them, to a specialist collector, that makes them different stamps. So Pete, what is a plate number? To be able to answer that question, we're going to need to understand a little bit about how stamps were produced at this time. It was a long and complicated process and it involved firstly a highly specialised engraver engraving the stamp on a single block, a stamp size block. This was then reproduced 240 times to make up a plate. They were arranged in 20 rows of 12 stamps in each row. The post office, in order to try and prevent forgeries and fraud, decided that in the bottom of each stamp they would put check letters and those letters would be different for each stamp in that plate. So there were 240 different combinations. It started in the top left hand corner with AA, then went AB, AC, and then on the second row BA, BB, BC, and so on, until the final one was TL. And those check letters had to be punched into the plate by hand. So because they were done by hand, there are slight differences between each plate using those slight differences plus other characteristics such as warm bits or bits that may have even broken off in the process you can tell which plate your penny black comes from there are a total of 11 different plates used but plate one was so badly worn that it almost had to be completely re refurbished and it's classed as a separate plate so you have plate 1A, plate 1B, and then plates 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 11. I'm still too missing, so that's the reason I've only got 11, not 13. So if by chance anybody does have a penny black, how do they access the information as in to find out what the plate number and what letter sequence? It's not an easy process. All the information is on the internet and there are guides to go by and you can also buy a book. The book cost me almost as much as a penny black cost me. But it's not easy. It does take an experienced eye and I spent a lot of time practicing asking other people if my idea was correct and having them confirm it before I could reasonably confidently be sure I'd come up with the right answer. So if... and, and all of the plates that I have got, I have had checked by a, a more experienced uh, stamp collector. So if somebody does have a penny black, could they walk into Stanley Gibbons and say, OK, this is what I've got. Can you tell me or verify this is genuine and they can identify the plate um, and the letters? People and companies will do it generally for a small fee. I doubt whether you could walk into Stanley Gibbons and just ask for it to be done. They would certainly plate it for you for a small fee. And sometimes it's worth doing because most of the penny blacks are worth roughly the same amount, roughly. Come on, Pete, how much are we talking? This is what everybody <laughs> wants to know. I'll, I'll talk about the value of penny blacks in a minute. So they're worth roughly the same amount, but there is one plate, plate number 11, the last one, where only 160,000 stamps were issued from that plate because they changed the colour to a penny red. And so that one is worth considerably more than all the others. And we're talking up into the thousands rather than the hundreds. Right, so now we've gone from talking about the penny black to a penny red. Yeah, penny reds came after the penny black. And there's, there's a long story about that, which I'll go into in another podcast. Yeah, penny blacks, as we said before, they are a valuable stamp, but they're not an extremely valuable stamp. And, and whilst we're on the subject, if we talk about the value, it does depend on a lot of things. You can actually pick up a penny black for less than £50 now, quite easily, but there will be things wrong with it. And the things to look out for is standard damage for a stamp is if it's torn, it's not going to be worth very much. If it's got a thin, it won't be worth very much. A thin is a piece of the stamp where it's either been where it's been stuck to the envelope or even where it's been previously hinged and when it's been removed it's removed as part of the back of the stamp so that part of the stamp you can see through in places. So what do we mean by hinged? The hinge is a device that attaches the stamp to your stamp album. Right um, so when you've got a stamp album you use hinges to put your stamps You can in. use hinges, yeah. And but as they I've can just be said, damaged But they can them. damage the stamp, so right. it's, it's advisable not to use hinges anymore. Other things that, make, that, that affect the value is the cancellation. When they were originally produced, they were actually called obliterators. 
And the idea was that you completely obliterated the stamp with ink so that it couldn't be used again. And if you've got a penny black where you can barely see what the stamp is, that's going to affect the value as well. And finally, the, probably the most important thing is the margins. When penny blacks were produced, they weren't perforated. They were just produced on a single sheet of paper. And the cashier at the post office had to cut it out with scissors. So she just had a piece of paper She had a sheet of with paper stamps, with 240 stamps on and it. And she would physically, with a pair of scissors, cut out the number you wanted. Yes, yes, exactly. And there is a border around each stamp, but depending on the skill of the cashier and also whether they had time or, or could even be bothered, sometimes they cut into the stamp, sometimes they chopped a bit off, but sometimes you've got a full border all the way around, and that's the one you want. It's called having four margins which basically means there's a white border around the whole stamp. And if you can get one with four good margins, that's worth considerably more. So what's the stamp worth? As I said originally, you can pick up a penny black for less than 50 pound. It will have something wrong with it. It might have no margins or just one small margin. It might have a slight tear. It might have a heavy cancel, but for 50 pounds, you can have your own penny black. If you want one that's in reasonable condition, you're gonna pay between 50 and 150. It probably won't have four good margins, but it will certainly have several margins and not have any tears, not have any thins or anything else with it. For a really good one, and I have to say none of mine are this standard, but for a really good one, you could pay up to 500 pounds. For a standard one, if it's something special about it, it would be worth even more, which again, I'll talk about shortly. However, plate 11 is worth considerably more. It would probably cost you upwards of four or five thousand pounds to get a plate 11. That's one of the reasons I don't have one of those. As I said, that's for an ordinary stamp, but there are lots of extras that would make it worth slightly more. When these stamps were first produced, each postmaster was sent a cancellation stamp, which was in the form of a Maltese cross and a pack and the pack was to make up the ink which they were to use. The ink was red, but they weren't sent the ink, they had to actually make the ink up. So every postmaster mixed it slightly differently. And whilst most of them are the same, you do get some variations. It, it's supposed to be red, as I said, but you can get some pink ones, you can get some very, very deep red ones. There, there are even other colours which have been brought about by strange chemical reactions. So if you get those, or a, a stamp with one of those marks, then they are worth a lot more than, than the prices I've just quoted. Additionally, in London, they introduced a process where in the middle of the Maltese cross, they, there was a number which signified which region of London the stamp was posted in. And that went from one to 12. So if you get a penny black, cancelled with one of those numbers inside the Maltese cross, again, that's worth, that's worth a lot more. Another thing which could uh, enhance the value of Penny Black is the actual cancellation itself. As I said earlier, each postmaster was delivered a cancellation in the form of a Maltese cross, but inevitably some of these got damaged or broken during use. The postmaster would often continue using it in that state, or get it repaired locally or even replaced locally. This has led to several distinctive looking postmarks. Each of these can add value to the stamp. So the prices I quoted are a sort of general price. You could certainly pay less for it. You can certainly pay more for it. And there are lots of variations that would make the stamp worth a lot more. And of course, that's just the used penny blacks. If we go to the mint penny blacks, so by mint, we mean never been used, never, never been, been used. stamped. The minimum you would pay for a mint one is probably about a £1,000, as you would expect. There aren't anywhere near as many mint penny blacks around. And do they come up for auction very often? Oh, they do, yeah, yeah. A quick look before I came on here, there were a good 10 or 12 on eBay, all of them over a £1,000. So and, and to be honest, for a £1,000 one, it, again, it wouldn't be particularly good quality. I'm, I'm surprised you're quoting eBay on a single stamp for £1,000. £1,000 on eBay to me sounds a lot well, of money, but I know people buy it, cars and all sorts of things. But it, I only use an eBay because it's one most people are familiar with. But yeah, if I was spending £1,000 on a single stamp, I would buy from a reputable dealer as well. 
it's it's not worth the risk. But going back to the value, for a top value mint penny black, you could be paying tens of thousands of pounds. So they are quite rare. And there is believed, as I said before, they were printed in sheets of 240. There is only one sheet of 240 left in the world, as far as everybody knows. What, a full a sheet full that's sheet, never been used? Which is held by the um, British Postal Museum. Who knows what that would be worth. So, Pete, you talked about the remaining sheets of mint stamps, penny blacks, are in the British Postal Museum. Where is the British Postal Museum? The British Postal Museum is in Phoenix Place, London, near uh, Kings Cross Station. So, that's the story of penny blacks. It is the first stamp ever produced, but it's not a particularly rare stamp. Saying that, it's still a very popular stamp. Everybody wants a penny black because everybody knows of a penny black. As I said, I have 11. I'm still looking for the remaining two to complete my set. One which may take me a very long time to get, but uh, hopefully that will be achieved one day. Thank you for listening to my podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it and maybe you've learnt a little too. I would love to hear from you with your tips and stories. I can be found on Facebook and Instagram as Our Dad Stamps, as well as through my online shops at eBay and Delcamp. Listen again next week for another episode of the Our Dad Stamps podcast.